take a full look at your network with Glasswire. For more information, check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Moddy here, back with another video, and today we're back at it once again, busting some PC myths that come up in day-to-day -day usage of the internet, computers, technology, and also too comes up in PC conversations, if regular people have PC conversations. Well, I guess Microsoft thinks we do anyway. So let's go ahead and jump into some myths that you may have heard around the internet, prove that they're wrong, and I guess, yeah, prove that they're wrong. So first up, we have paid PC cleaners are the best way to keep your PC running smoothly and on point. Now, honestly, that's really not the case. Sure, there may be a couple out there that are actually pretty decent and do what they say on the label, but for the most part, PC cleaners are 99.99% absolutely rubbish and doing nothing good for your computer, completely BS, and generally are then linked to some sort of scam where people are trying to get you to buy stuff. In reality, you don't actually need to buy stuff. Now, the, the way that they actually work is by bombarding the user who isn't exactly tech savvy with really techy terms like registry or file system and adding some scary things on top of it like corruption or fragmentation or even damage. So saying something like your registry is corrupted and damaged sounds really, really bad. And if there's a solution of just paying a hundred dollars and now that it doesn't say that anymore, a lot of people might think, oh yeah, that's going to fix my computer. But that is definitely not the case. The user will go ahead and pay the money in some cases, a hundred, maybe even $200. And then the program goes ahead and says positive words like protected, safe, and up to date, which makes the user think that the system is much better. In reality, all that really changed with the program and their computer is generally speaking, a virus scan, which can be done for free anyway, and that's about it. Some things move around, some words are said on the screen, and for the most part, nothing actually happens. Now, because the person spent a hundred flippin' dollars on the program, they think that their PC is running faster and a placebo effect does come into play, where they've paid a hundred dollars and wow, their computer must be a hundred dollars worth faster than what it originally was, thanks to this magic program installed on a system. Now, if you actually break it down and think about it, yeah, it kinda sounds crazy, I've just paid a hundred dollars and now my system's faster, but nothing actually was done. Definitely does sound crazy, but there's a lot of people who do fall into those traps where the PC cleaners say some scary words and they need to pay some big dollars to get rid of those scary words. But generally speaking, a lot of them just happen to be, I guess, uh, scams in a roundabout way. Now, don't get me wrong, there's definitely a lot of, I guess, cleaning type applications that can actually be really, really helpful out there. Whilst personally, I don't like to use any as I generally can just go into a computer and do it. There are definitely a couple out there that can provide an actual decent service that actually do some decent scanning and do some actual work to your system. However, if the packet or the box or the website it comes from is claiming 20% better performance, 100, this, 10,000, that, this and that, generally speaking, it's not going to be doing yourself any favors. In fact, it would be doing the opposite because now you're installing a program, taking up dry space and also too, it's going to be running, which is then slowing down your system. So generally you'll be getting an opposite effect out to that. Great example, I do work in IT repair and I see this all the time where a user has bought one of these kind of cleaning applications and run it and they haven't really noticed a the difference. They bring it into the store where a technician like myself looks at it and goes, here is exactly what your problem is and it didn't cost you anything because we're just looking at the computer. So a program like this doesn't exactly replace a proper qualified PC technician. And a great example is your car. If your car is due for service, putting magical petrol in it isn't gonna replace a service. Same thing with your PC. If your PC is running slow and got problems, downloading a program and paying someone else $100 to not really do anything is no replacement for an actual IT technician to have a look at it and see what is going on. Might be as simple as just you got too many programs running in the background and a simple way to do it is just close them off or might be something a little bit more serious where you may need a new drive or some extra RAM or something like that in your system. But paid PC cleaning services are really not that great. Next up, we have turning the PC off and on again all the time or just never turning off your computer is the worst thing you can do for the system. Now, unfortunately, there's no sure far way to test this. We can't exactly get a computer and another computer 
run them for like a hundred years and see what happens because let's face it by the time that happens whatever comes out in the future will be totally making the other stuff obsolete so these tests are really hard to do however with that being said if we look say in the past 5 10 or even 15 years we can actually see that well leaving a computer on or turning it on and off all the time doesn't exactly make too much of a difference other than things like your power bill if you do live in an area where power is expensive and some lower cost fans and some more uh, sketchy hard drives not looking at anyone's Seagate uh, there are some instances where yes leave your computer on for a longer period of time can cause it to die sooner but for the most part, most computer components these days are rated five, six, even seven years of usage, depending on what component you are looking at. And I've seen components in system last well over 10 years with absolutely no problems, provided the system was regularly maintained. So turning it on and off all the time really doesn't make a difference, or leaving it on the whole time also too doesn't make much of a difference, provided you're doing it with actually somewhat decent parts. Sure, if you get a computer that costs you like $100, it's probably not going to last as long long, but making sure you look after your system doesn't really matter whether it's on all the time or it's off all the time. There's even people out there that make the argument that leaving it on is going to be better because the electrons flowing through things like capacitors and the motherboard and all those other components can theoretically cause damage by turning it off and on, but the damage is so minuscule you'd have to turn it off and on until the end of time before you'd actually notice any kind of differences here. Now, don't get me wrong, that doesn't mean you can't get a dud part and say, in a year's time it might die, but that's not necessarily from running it all the time, that's more because the part was going to fail in a year's time anyway, rather than any problems there. Great example is uh, a relative's PC that they bought way back in 2005 from a big box PC store. It was basically off the shelf parts that the store assembled and then sold to them, pretty kind of standard deal. It lasted a very long time, something to the tune of 13 years, seeing that we're here in 2018, and it was only ever shut down every six months for a few minutes to go ahead and blow the dust out, and also to when the computer computer crash, which wasn't exactly very often, so for the best part of about 13 or so years, the computer was running, and the only reason why it's not running today is because when they moved, it was dropped down a driveway and like rolled and cracked and splattered along the ground for about 10 meters, so it really wasn't doing that great, let's face it, any computer that's dropped down a driveway for 10 meters is probably going to die, but for the actual use case of having it on 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for 13 years, the computer had absolutely no problems, but making sure you do maintenance on your computer can be the best way to keep it around for a very long time. Next up, we have building your own PC will always be cheaper than those expensive pre-built systems. So yeah, generally speaking, building your own computer can be in some cases cheaper than going for the exact same spec or very similar spec from someone like a HP, Dell, uh, Lenovo or any of those other guys. Obviously if you are comparing a laptop to a desktop there's obviously big differences in design. A company has to spend a lot more money trying to get the parts into a laptop than they do into a tower so prices are obviously going to be different between a laptop and desktop but just a tower versus another tower, yeah generally speaking you will save some money there. However, just because you're saving money doesn't mean you're getting a better system. For instance, you may save yourself say two, three hundred dollars between your system you buy and the exact same spec that you might get from Dell, HP, Alienware, Lenovo, any of those guys. However, there is some big differences. For example, if you do buy from again a Dell or a HP, they would also to be being the same people who you deal with warranty returns. They'd also to, generally speaking, have some sort of technical support that they can go ahead and offer you over the phone. They also to are a simple easy way to get some pretty decent R&D. Because the computer comes out of Dell or HP, generally there's a fair bit of engineering that goes into not only the computer, but the case and all the other components that go with it, and future R&D that goes into it to making sure things like BIOSes are up to date, security patches are updated, and all those kind of things which can just give you a better overall experience. Whereas if you want to save yourself some dollars, you now become the R&D department, you also to become the research department, you become the support department, anything goes wrong with that computer, you are the one who has to figure it out, fix it yourself, or you don't have a computer. Now, for some people, that savings is definitely fine. For people like me, I absolutely love working on computers. Heck, why I'm making a YouTube channel, but uh, for me, I do like that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of other people where that cost saving may become an actual disadvantage 
compared to just buying the whole computer from a PC store. Though that being said, there's also to the whole temptation of building your own computer and then spending even more money. I've seen plenty of people go out to spend $1,000 on their brand new DIY PC that then end up spending $1,500, $1,600, $1,700 because whilst they were at the PC store, they saw some cool accessories to go in the computer, they found some add-ons, the sales guy sold them the next tier of video card or some extra RAM or an extra hard drive. It is really, really easy to not only buy extra parts when building your own computer, but also to buy the wrong parts when building your own computer. So sure, in theory, if you know what you're doing, you can save yourself some money, but in the long run, in terms of support and warranty, you may be losing out there. And also too, in terms of building yourself, you may be tempted by some LEDs and some other flashy things to go in your new computer, which would then bump your prices up. Sure, the OEM may not offer it like HP or Dell, but still, you may get a little bit tempted there. Next up, automatic updates are the worst and should never be done. Updates are terrible, we should never do them. So actually updates are some of the best things you can actually do for the software on your devices. Whether it's something like an Android phone like this guy or a Windows PC, Linux device or even a Mac, doing your updates is absolutely really important. Now the reason for this is patching things like vulnerabilities, adding free features to the system and making the platform or service generally better. Updates is really a great way to do this. Now Windows is probably one of the more notorious kind of one. A lot of people do know that Windows updates has been very well known back in the Windows 7 days to be slowing down systems and sure that may be true for some devices but for the most of us if you are looking after your system doing general maintenance making sure your disks are defragged if they are hard drives or if you're using a super fast SSD shouldn't have too many problems there all in all an actual update is generally a better thing for your system rather than a negative point so just saying that they're bad isn't always the case sure some updates will go ahead and break features and functionality you like in previous versions but they will generally also to come with a patch to fix those problems or they'll come and actually fix other problems you weren't even aware about. So updates are pretty important and if you are uh, running a system that's a little bit out of date, go ahead and make sure you do your updates. If you have a PC that's slow, you must have a virus. So I do hear this one quite often, my PC is slow, I have a virus, or this PC is running really badly, it must have a virus, and that's generally speaking not actually the case. A lot of the time virus scanners, even built into things like Windows, do a really good job of picking up viruses and malware and other things like that. So the chance is it's actually a hardware fault or something else wrong with the computer, rather than just having a virus. But great example, someone does come into a PC store looking for a brand new PC, they were complaining of a slow computer but after asking some questions found out that well actually it wasn't a virus and the computer was perfectly fine just had an older hard drive that either needed to be reformatted or replaced with an SSD pretty much saving that person thousands of dollars which is a really good thing to go ahead and do so just saying that your computer is slow and has a virus definitely isn't the whole story. And Macs are safer than Windows. Now this does come up quite regularly in these kind of videos, but sure, that may have been true back in the 90s and maybe even early 2000s, but the fact is hackers want to go for the large majority of users and whatever that majority is, they will definitely go for it. Back in the days when I guess Mac OS was less adopted than it is today, the whole Unix kind of backbone didn't have as many viruses built for it because let's face it, there wasn't exactly as many people using it. so. Why would a hacker try and build a bunch of viruses for a Unix platform when well, no one really used it or a Mac OS platform? Whereas a lot of people were using Windows at the time, so that was the most attacked platform. But if you go ahead and take a walk through the city or your local town and you look through those hipster coffee shops, you'll definitely see those people over on their MacBooks with a few PCs scattered in between. And because you're seeing this, also to the hackers are seeing this as well, although they're looking through the internet. So essentially, they're just going to attack whoever has the most market share, whether they be a Mac or a PC, these days they're just as secure as each other. Someone could make the argument that thanks to the fact that Mac OS X has a little bit better default security options and has a little bit more of a locked down type ecosystem, it is slightly harder to get a virus on a Mac, but at the end of the day, they are just as easy to get a virus on either a Mac or a PC, because these days Macs are pretty popular and PCs are very popular, so whether you have either or is still going to get a virus, and a virus scanner is definitely needed for a system on the internet here today. No matter what anyone says, Max can definitely get a virus. And rounding out our myths right here, we have, I have one terabyte of memory. Simply, no you don't. If you did have a terabyte of memory, 
the whole internet would be all over you as to how you got a terabyte of memory in your system because that is just not possible at the time of recording on consumer hardware. Don't get me wrong, up in the server space and enterprise space that it's totally possible to have a terabyte of memory but not exactly for the end user here today. Storage space is probably what you're actually referring to rather than memory and that is because a lot of people use storage space and memory very interchangeably in a system but they're actually quite different from each other. A computer has two types of memory being well memory itself and also to storage which is for your long-term options. So we have short-term memory and long-term storage. Long-term storage are for things like your photos, your files, music, uh, documents, word things, all those types of things, even programs will be stored in storage, however memory is for your computer to actually access. The end user doesn't really have much to do with memory that is generally handled by the computer itself. And just as a quick side note, a computer is very much like a large calculator, adding together ones and zeros and getting outcomes and all that kind of stuff. We do need somewhere to actually store it because the actual process of doing all those calculations and ones and zeros doesn't have a whole ton of storage or memory in this case on the actual unit itself. So it needs somewhere to quickly dump all those files and read them back really, really fast. Or in this case, dump all the ones and zeros and read them back really, really fast. And that is where memory comes in. Now, memory is always a lot less than actual storage because you don't really need a whole lot. Sure, don't get me wrong, in high-end gaming and editing of videos and this kind of stuff that I like to do, sure, a lot of memory is needed but for the average user typing up word documents watching some videos and playing games you probably don't need one terabyte worth of memory now yes to those more tech savvy watches out there ram is a lot more complex than just storing ones and zeros really quickly yes you can do things like ram disks and all that kind of stuff but for a very simple explanation memory is just a quick place for the computer to store stuff and pull it back really fast just like the short-term memory in your mind whereas storage is where you do keep things for a lot longer because it is stored for for a long period of time and that is measured in terabytes these days. You can have one, two, three, four, all the way up to like 12 terabytes worth of storage at the moment. Whereas today on a common system, you're only looking at up to around 16 to 32 gigabytes worth of memory. Still, they are ways of storing data, but you just don't really access memory. You access the storage on the system. But there we go, some PC myths that do come up quite often over here on the internet and all around the place. And a lot of them can come from a number of factors from salespeople not exactly knowing what they're talking about and selling you a computer with a terabyte worth of memory when that's not exactly the case to other things like more common myths that just, just people talk about who don't really have much to actually back them up. But do let me know down in that comment sections what you've heard around the internet or what you've heard in general. Let me know down in that comment sections. I would have loved to have a chat with you guys down there. Otherwise, thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.